Hey everyone, we're going to take a look at the Barnes TAC XPD 9mm plus P 115 grain all copper hollow point. This is lead free. A new product that Barnes introduced in early 2013. This is a box of 20. I'm starting to see these pop up at various retailers. This one came from Cabela's at approximately $32 for a box of 20. I'm also seeing pricing going down as low as $26 online, but after you pay freight, you're going to end up paying about $30 a box, so just keep that in mind. Number one, copper bullets are a little bit more expensive, and I think Barnes is going to charge a little bit more for their ammo anyway. Now, you notice this, that it doesn't appear to be a copper bullet. This has some type of coating on it, and I believe the brass has a coating on it as well. In fact, when you read the packaging, it says Technichrome, so they have given it a, a nice fancy name. And there's some nice fancy packaging on this as well. You noted that clear window where you can see the product. It's going to be sealed on both ends of the box. So if you're at the store and looking at it, you're going to have to unseal the box to do so. And that's probably not a good thing. Your dealer may not appreciate that. And also there's a nice little hologram on the side of the box. And that's interesting. I, I wish the ammo makers would try to make the boxes as plain as possible and focus more on the product itself. I mean, it's... It's ammo, so spend less on the marketing aspect of it. And I'm saying that, and I'm a sales and marketing guy, but I mean, come on, let's get real with it. So back to the product itself. Again, a copper bullet plus P, and I think that's very interesting given the advertised velocity of 1,125 feet per second. We'll check the actuals on that in just a moment. That was a quick just a moment. This is the Glock 19 Gen 4, four inch barrel. Used that a moment ago for the opening shots. Very, very light recoil with this ammo. Advertised velocity, 1,125 feet per second. That's typically lower than your 115 grain full metal jacket target load. So the good thing about this is the ammo is coming in in the range of where your practice ammo is going to be. That's a positive, I think. However, we're coming in a little bit lower than that with the five shots. There they are for you. Give you a second to take that in. And then the five shot average, 1,060 feet per second, 287 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle, coming in about 6% on average below the advertised velocity. Next up, we have a test shot with the SimTest Media. This is calibrated to be consistent with 10% ordnance gel, plus four layers of denim. That is an IWBA testing protocol. One shot from the Glock 19, 10 feet. Decent shot placement and no pass through on the 20 inch block. Wasn't expecting a pass through, somewhat of a hunch with this ammo. Here's another hunch. I'm gonna go ahead and call the penetration. Let's see, right about, how about right there? 10 inches of penetration is my call. Let's take a look. I've taken that 50 pound block and then isolate the bullet path and cut that right down the middle to produce two halves. Quick look at the first half. Expansion appears to begin about one inch in. This cavity, the biggest part of it beginning here, runs only to about the four inch mark. Again, the widest part of this. And I'm gonna say that is three quarters of an inch wide at its peak and possibly, say, half an inch deep. So not a real impressive wound cavity in this zone. And I'm gonna say that's probably due to the low velocity. Here's the second half, obviously pretty much a mirror image in the primary area of this permanent cavity. The goal here is to check out the penetration. What did I say, 10 inches? Are you thinking more? Not much more than my prediction. There's the 10 inch mark, and the leading edge of the expanded bullet is at 10 and 3 quarter inches. How about that? I was pretty close. Did expand, and let's get in there and peel that back a little bit. Quick look, we'll get it cleaned up and take a closer look. Interesting, all copper, a little bit of lead in the cavity, but 10 and 3 quarter inches is the penetration mark. There's the high end on expansion, 0.694, the average expanded diameter, 0.688 inches. You would expect weight retention on a copper bullet to be right at 100% or pretty close to it. Just a tad bit over, there is a small plug of denim that's very well embedded in that hollow point cavity. Could be the difference.
I would like to be clear that I am all for technology improving bullet performance. However, I wasn't convinced before I made this review that a 115 grain copper bullet would offer anything comparable to the best lead jacketed bullets in that weight. I was hopeful that the mass built into the bullet's base would provide ample momentum for sufficient penetration, but the bullet is just too light and too slow when considering this degree of expansion. Not to mention, how would it penetrate through bone or an appendage such as an arm or hand prior to reaching center of mass? While the low energy is a plus for recoil control, I feel it is outweighed by these other factors. I just have a high degree of concern with regard to penetration because deep penetration combined with shot placement, tactics, and luck is the key to reaching vitals and stopping a threat. Thanks for watching.